before even we, we start uh, to the knee, we start our class. Uh, uh, I it is uh, the, the, I know there is there is someone who has not uh, Nani has not been having uh, been been with us, Jerry. Uh, it is my intention to to continue doing these classes, although I sometimes go, get overwhelmed eh, because of my work. Uh, this is my side hustle, but I intend to we intend to do four things. Uh, discussion of this uh, past papers which I've not researched. Then I I'm going to we are going to do drafting, and drafting will entails uh, the 2008 to 2019. Uh, drafting, if you look at part B, the, the drafting that I've not done, then we are going to do, if you have, we have time, we are going to do some uh, time to look at modified answers to year 2008 to 2019 paper, the consolidated paper, because when I did that research, as I told you, I was in KSL. And later, so the, some of the law may have changed. So we, if time allows, we are going to look at the modified answers to some of those questions. So when you are reading, please, uh, some of those answers may not have questions which are very current. Eh? And uh, I cannot be able to, to go back and uh, start changing those answers. So that's why that is as usually a disclaimer usually put. That's why I I see here there below the paper that said this this research was uh, is done to the best of researchers' knowledge, and uh, uh, done at the time of uh, research was done. And uh, in those documents, I did not uh, indicate the time I did research, but in other documents, uh, you see the, the the time I did research. I usually indicate there, so it's very very important. Then, uh, finally, uh, in each subject, I want us to do silent features of various acts. Uh, I think those will be the last classes. Uh, and case laws to rely on and predictions. So we are going to proceed uh, based on that, that, that outline. And uh, we are behind schedule. So this weekend we was supposed to be class for, um, I think, civil litigation, but we are going to see how we are going to do during the week uh, so that we can catch up. So uh, I only need the commitment on your side and the commitment on my side. And uh, it's a sacrifice. Uh, I know it's a sacrifice for you, and also it's a sacrifice on my part, but uh, we must make out the best out of what we have. So I'll continue with question uh, three. Uh, Pondamali is an astute business who could identify opportunities in areas with no one had thought of. At one point, identified an an important plant in Seme Forest sold to a Turoko Pharmaceutical, which in turn paid him millions of shillings for discovery. In the recent business counter, he came across some rare ads in one remote village. Upon further analysis, he realized that the rare ads could be used to make explosive if mixed with certain chemicals excited about the prospect for making billions Podamali literally invested all he could in buying machinery, equipment in preparation. Unfortunately, as the fate to have it, his license to commercialize the area as were denied on security grounds. And as a matter of fact, the government nationalized the grounds of which the areas could be found and gave their military control 
over eight. Pondamari received no compensation and this affected his financial situation since some of the machineries and equipment have been purchased via loans. He has to date a financial obligation his, his creditors and shareholders of his company who are worried that the investment will soon be lost. Pondamari is st uh, staring at bankruptcy. He approaches you for legal advice to explore whether there are alternatives to bankruptcy, advise him. Father, we come before you, Lord. We thank you, God, for this afternoon that you have given us. As we navigate this question, be with us, Lord. Uh, be with us. Let us be able God, to gain wisdom in when you're answering questions. Uh, remember the participant who have joined us today. Be with them. Aside, they, they also prepare for the exams. Uh, be with them. As they enter home stretch, as they do their classes, be with them. We pray all this, believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So, uh, we are going to, to, to go to, the, we are going to use this order. Maybe, maybe I hope the others are going to join us. Uh, Marianne, uh, then uh, Jerry, then uh, Ruth. That is the, the, the order we are going to, to use as we navigate through this class. So don't the rules of engagement, as we said last time, is that don't fear say, to say that, don't, don't fear to all people must participate. Do not fear to answer longer. Uh, ask any question and at any given time. When you ask a question, uh, please don't uh, try to go because you see when you uh, make it as if it is a class. Because uh, when you are you you try to look at the answer. Uh, you you are not helping yourself because in the exam scenario you will not be able. It's better even to fail or to answer the wrong way. Then you are going to know you, that you are going to learn. So, uh, Marianne, what is the keyword there? You start with the keyword. Alternatives to bankruptcy. Alternative to bankruptcy. Uh -huh. that is very true. So, what are the alternative to bankruptcies? Uh, how would you answer this question? I'm still on you. So, there are three alternatives to bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. We have the voluntary arrangement, which is usually proposed by the bankrupt. It has to be um, it has to be allowed by court for it mm -hmm. to be applicable. Usually, um, get into an arrangement with your creditor on how you're going to pay. So if you, like maybe in installment or you do an asset swap if, if it's possible. Then the second one is where you have the no asset procedure. This is where you don't have any viable assets that can be realized. Mm -hmm. The requirements are there are no assets to be realized. The debt should be between 100,000 and 4 million shillings. And this person must have not been um, allowed to do the no asset procedure before. And um, the, the third alternative is that that's voluntary arrangement, no assets. The other one is, um, why am I forgetting? Um, summary installment order, which is usually proposed by the official receiver mm -hmm. on how after like his assets, your the viability of how you can pay debt, your assets, the income you're generating, he proposes um uh, an installment arrangement where the debtor can pay his creditors. Yes, uh, very good. Uh, no asset procedure. You have said no asset procedure. The other one you have said is voluntary arrangement and. And um, volunteer and um, installment summary installment order. Uh, summary installment order. Uh, 
that question you have answered uh, to very well. Uh, and uh, uh, also to uh, uh, the answer also, you can look at uh, section 14 of the Insolvency Act. This is an act that you must, uh, you must uh, internalize and make some small notes for you to be able to do your exam well. Uh, as you can see how I'm perusing, it has so many sections. Uh, and also the insolvency regulations, the P BRS, BRS website has some very good notes on this uh, to help you prepare. Uh, this question uh, connected to this also, you can be asked uh, alternatives, alternatives to liquidation. Uh, note that one. It, it has been asked in the past. And uh, I think we touched uh, last time when we are doing the October 2022. Alternative to bankruptcy. Then alternative to liquidation. Akin administration and all those things. Break creditors in the source moment, no asset to procedure, enter a voluntary arrangement, uh, and make proposal to creditors, what uh, Nani has, uh, Miriam have said. So that, that question is, 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 is well answered. Uh, And we can move. I'm looking at uh, what I can add here. I wrote. Uh, okay. Sawa, sawa. We can move to the next question. Look at alternative to bank. Alternative related to this is alternative to winding up. Uh, it is, I've been asked in the past, it's in there in the QA. So this question going hand in hand for you to be prepared well. So we go to the next question. Pondamali is still concerned that one of the creditors who have been sending him a grade letters may apply for bankruptcy order. He has asked, asked you to write a legal opinion discussing the requirements of condition to be satisfied regarding when a creditor may, uh, may apply for a bankruptcy order in respect of the delta. So, uh, what is the key word here, Anjari? You are next. Uh, I see uh, we have been asked about the uh, what what uh, what the creditors must satisfy for them to be able to apply for a bankruptcy order. Mm -hmm. But I am not very well versed with this uh, with this one. I will need to I will need to get it in my head well, so I don't I don't have an answer. Okay, don't worry. Uh, the key word there is uh, requirement and condition to settle the quality creditor may apply for a bankruptcy order. So uh, this is where the the you know the the you you know the 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 delta or the, the bankrupt, the person himself may move what is called voluntary, uh, uh, to look for voluntary bankruptcy order. And also a creditor uh, may move to court to, for the bankrupt to be declared. So that's, that's, that's one of the other way. Uh, so uh, for your, for, for your, for your homework, uh, go and uh, look at, uh, because the, this question, the alternative to it is the condition to be satisfied by, for, for, for a person to move voluntarily for a bankruptcy order to be issued. But here, we are being asked uh, about the creditor, creditors, creditors petition to quote for the bankruptcy order to be given. 
So, uh, what do you think, uh, Ruth? What are the conditions? We are doing insolvency now, but yes. what I would say, maybe yeah. the, just the fact that you can't pay your debt when it's due, maybe your liability is higher than your assets. Mm. That is what I would guess, but we are doing this now. You are doing this now. Uh -huh. That is a very good trial. Uh, Miriam, what do you think? Um, I think the creditor should make sure they ascertain that the debtor is unable to pay, mm -hmm. that um, maybe uh, the, the, is it the assets of the debtor have, ex um, the liabilities have exceeded the, 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 the assets. Um, that I think was um, basically if we, and that maybe the debtor is unable to pay their their debts at the time they come like mature when they're supposed to be paid. Mm -hmm. I feel like we could also um do you, should you make reference to those tests the 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 cash balance and the other tests for 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 um bankruptcy I guess I'm not sure. Okay, when when uh, you you see. When you are studying this, uh, when you know the secret to understand to doing this question, eh? you see, when you are about when you ask about alternative to bankruptcy or alternative to winding up of the company, uh, the, 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 the the alternatives are, are, are almost the same: voluntary arrangement, bra bra administration. But also when you are you are you are you are you are, you are asked about uh, the uh, when a creditor wants to move to court for the bankruptcy order for the person to be declared a bankrupt, uh, that is what it means. You should also think uh, what uh, what a person a creditor also uh, the condition he must satisfy for 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 him or her. To move to court for the company to be declared to be liquidated. So one of the things is that uh, obviously one of the things uh, uh, which must go without saying is that uh, the the person must have been unable to pay uh, the debts. So uh, so what is a bankruptcy order? I'm projecting to you. Uh, this is a very common question. Uh, this is a very common question. Uh, they usually come. What is a bankruptcy order? I, uh, you must understand is in relation to a debtor means an order of court adjudging the debtor bankrupt. You see. Uh, in case of a winding up order, it's where or a liquidation. Now it's called previously it was called a winding up order. Now it's called a liquidation order under the company such is where the company is declared uh, 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 declared that it's not able to pay its debt. So uh, this is a section you need to understand. Eh? Section 17, uh, the condition that must have been satisfied for, 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 for bankruptcy order to be, to, be, to, to be given. One or more, section 17, one, one or more creditors or may, may apply to court for a bankruptcy order to be made in respect to a daughter it is to debts owed by the debtor. Such application in relation to debts owed by the debtor only if the time of is made. Uh, the amount of debt or aggregate amount of debt is equal or exceeds the, the prescribed bankruptcy level, uh, which is a, a one hundred thousand. 
The debt of each debt is a liquidated amount payable to the applicant creditor or more, either immediately at the same future time is unsecured. The debt each or the debt or the debt appears either to be unable to pay. So one of the conditions is that it has must have uh, exceeded the aggregate amount. Now the, also, uh, the debtor must uh, uh, the debtor must has been able not to be able to pay. Which also, uh, this also is in the if, if you ask the same question in winding web of a company, which you 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 also say the same thing. The the debtor have been able to to pay his debt after being served. Then there must be no outstanding application to state a statutory demand. So uh, also that's also applied also in the winding up of a company. There must be no outstanding application to sell, set, set aside a statutory declaration. Now, Then the section two C says uh, unable to pay his uh, uh, the, the condition in which the debtor may not have been able to to pay his debt. So another very very important uh, uh, another very very important point is that. Uh, it starts by the creditor serving uh, the debtor with a statutory demand, saying the debt which is owing. So that is the, the, the first thing. So the statutory demand must have been, the, 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 the debtor must be unable to pay this debt. That is one of the conditions. The prescribed, it must be within the prescribed amount. Then, uh, the statutory demand must have been served, which also uh, these answers you can use them in the winding up of a company. And the, these are there is a there is a there is a question which it was asked. If you look at your Q and A, uh, I think year two thousand and eight to twenty nineteen, they swear they have asked the condition before uh, you apply for a winding up. So uh, another very very important section is. Uh, uh, if application contains a statement of a kind defined in 19, uh, the court may make a bankruptcy order until at, at least until 21 days. That is another condition. Must have la elapsed since the service of the relevant statutory demand have been served. So you don't serve uh, the statutory demand, then you 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 go to court directly and uh, uh, ask for a bankruptcy order. Twenty one days must have uh, elapsed. So th that, those are the conditions, and uh, if you do that question that way you would have answered it well. So my, my, my challenge to you is for you to go also and look at uh, the requirements or condition that must be satisfied before a creditor may apply for a winding wind, uh, liquidation order in respect of a company. Uh, I think it was asked in another way in the year 2008 to 2019. We may, might revisit it in, in the future, but for you, uh, for the time being, that is this is what I'm asking you to do during your free, uh, your free time. You know, what we usually do here uh, in this question, uh, not only are we going to we, do we look at this question that, that I've been asked here. We, we look at the predict what might come in the in the in the future, and we may not cover everything in class. The most the 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 biggest work 
for you is uh, to, if you want to pass, you know, get nine piece. The greatest work will be done when you are studying alone, especially on these areas I'm saying. Not even the class. The class will take two, three hours. Uh, the, also the class there in, the, in, 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 in your in, in the school also. Uh, you, you are going to, to build your knowledge. Yeah, you are building. But the most important thing is your, what I call the man or woman hours. The, the, that time you 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 used to to to, to do all the, uh, to do all, all all these things to look at these areas uh, look at the low do look at uh, the areas i can tell you the work that i put uh, for me to do this research before i i did my exam in 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 november 2015 it was a lot of work and you know that time the exam was not as hard as now so uh, from around second time, I was not at attending classes. And I've shared this with you, some of these classes, so that I can do this research. So I'm emphasizing that uh, if you want to, 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 to do well in these subjects, uh, make sure every day you spend some few hours uh, do, do, do looking at these areas of law that we are tackling. So we go to the next question. Uh, Pondamari fortunately enjoys a very cordial relationship with the bank, despite his recent misfortune. You see this special uh, relationship with the bank. He has managed to identif identify some farmers who are willing to supply him with beans for exportation. Yes, his, his suppliers have asked for a letter of guarantee. And as a legal officer, you have been requested to draft one and hand it over to the signing by the bank manager. Prepare a draft letter of guaranteed. Uh, above. So, uh, Jerry, what is the key word there? The letter of guarantee. Sorry? Drafting of the letter of guarantee. Yes, that is a keyword. The keyword we said in our last ca ca class is that a keyword is the keyword or keywords is what is the most important thing you need to understand for you to be able to tackle questions. All the other things are stories uh, to support uh, the keyword or keywords. So here you are supposed to draft a letter of guarantee. Uh, commercial drafting has come back. Uh, they were not testing before. In October 2022, we saw uh, they tested distributorship agreement. For the uh, now, they have to, they are asking you to draft a letter of guarantee. So uh, now uh, be ready for drafting. In the previous question that we have done. Uh, a and B, uh, you know, they usually tell you to draft commercial agreements. Uh, so it's very hard for you to be asked to be draft a bankruptcy or bankruptcy petition, statutory demand or bankruptcy order. Uh, but for you uh, or an affidavit to, to support your statutory demand. But I, as I told you in your last class, that uh, go and learn these documents because you may be told to the details which are contained in these documents, which I've just stated. And when you do that, uh, that question might come in your civil litigation. Don't be surprised. So when you are dealing with it, you are dealing with it both for commercial and also for 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 civil litigation, so uh, is there someone who have uh, did the draft can share the draft now?
is there someone who drafted uh, can share he 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 saw uh, uh, who uh, who share her draft? Um, first of all, okay, I did not do it, but I also don't understand. I understand we are guaranteeing the letter is being written by the bank to guarantee payment to the suppliers of the beans on behalf of Pondamali. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can do, uh, we could try and do drafts later and we send it to you in the course of the week. Mm. But I think it's the basic structure of a letter. It's just that you're now writing as the bank to guarantee Punda Punda Ma Mali to the bean supplier to the bean farmers. Yes. But then, sorry. In this case, you create a company for the suppliers, or how do you refer to them? Uh, you have not been told. Eh? Uh, we have been we have not been told the names of the farmers, eh? and uh, to me this is where I usually say, uh, if you read the doing by exam uh, document guide I, I shared to you, I said that there are sometimes you you usually include your 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 facts which you are not going to distort the facts of the question. So you can give these farmers a name. That is uh, allowed because you cannot uh, guarantee to some farmers who has, who have who don't have a name. No, no. You see, and also this bank. Have you been told the name of the bank? No. Also, you create the name of the bank because the name the bank be, must be specific. You see, now this is why I usually tell you unless you draft practically. Uh, you get that skis in your hands. Uh, it will not help you because I want also to see you how you have created your own facts. Uh, I've done. I've said that in the doing by exam. At a civil litigation in Kikuja, at a criminal in November, uh, you find you there are some facts you are going to create for you, which are not going to distort, of course, the question. But you must, for for example, here. You must create the name of the bank. You must identify these farmers by their name. Podimali is a person. Of course, that is known. Then we see how you draft. It's a skill. Please, when I tell you to draft, draft because uh, I'm helping you. I'm helping you. And uh, you are very lucky that we are not very many in this class. So even if you draft and you have five documents, uh, uh, if you even if you you have drafted all of you, each and every person will present. You have time to present because uh, my commitment to make nine piece to you. So uh, draft that one. We are going to look at it next time uh, before 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 Nini before before our, our next class. I'm just going to say share here. Admin can present, and from where you are, you will be able to present. So please, please uh, draft that thing. Uh, of course, use the required time. If it is uh, like this question of four marks, you are supposed to use around uh, 10 minutes to draft something, 10 minutes, because a question of uh, five marks use like 13 minutes. So you can use 10 marks to draft this thing without looking anywhere. And that's how you are going to test yourself. And uh, if you run about to drafting, you 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 be very see, I can tell you criminal and civil, you be you pass uh, very well if you know how to draft because those uh, drafting is what usually gives students problem. So we go to the next question. Uh, this drafting you, you are going to do and you are going to present you, the, as the first document before our, uh, we start our class. So we go to the next question, question four. Your friend Mambolea works at Kiswahili language tutor for a local institution. 
a job he has done for eight years. During the time, de demand for tutors in language has steadily increased, especially as country has become a business hub in the region, attracting investors and students from abroad. He's keen on leaving his current employment to start his own business, but he's short of capital. He has some livestock in the rural home, a motorbike he uses for transport and sundry household items. Is sure whether he can raise capital using this asset as security. Mamboleo have approached you to advise on the specific nature of securities uh, agreement he needs to enter into. Would be it would be lender requirements for agreement to be valid and steps regarding registration of agreement. Advice Mamboleo. So uh, I'm on you, Ruth. Which topic do you think this question is testing you? MPSR. Yes, movable property security rights topic. Uh, this is one of the topics that uh, it's not very difficult to do. If you find in your exam, be quickly to do it. And uh, the also, it's not tested always. Uh, so what are the keywords here in this question? Ruth? Um, a specific nature of security agreements, uh -huh. a requirement for the agreements to be valid, and the steps. There are three okay. things. There are three things. Very good. So. And when you're answering such a question, you see it is 10 marks. You must answer all the three parts of the question as Ruth have just said. Uh, you must, first of all, uh, say the specific nature of security agreement. Then what are the requirements? of the agreement to be valid. Then, what are the steps regarding the registration of the agreement? And if you answer that question in that, and you, in your question, in an, your answer, you separate how you're answering. Uh, first of all, you say, uh, this is the nature of the security agreement, because there are some marks awarded for that. Then, after you have identified the agreement, you say uh, the requirement of that agreement you have identified for it to be valid. Then, you separate your answer also saying the steps regarding the registration. So, uh, what do you think? Uh, we are on Marianne. What do you think the, the question is? So, what, um, the nature of security a, agreement. A security agreement uh -huh. is defined under Section 4 of the Movable Property Security Rights Act 2017. Mm. And it's the security agreement basically involves every transaction that secures payment or performance of an obligation without mm -hmm. um, regards to form or the person who owns, I think, the movable property or Chantel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. I continue. Okay. Uh, the nature of agreement is security, uh, security rights agreement. Eh? And... Uh, um, and you, you have identified, uh, you have defined it. Eh? And you yes. can also, in your answer, say that uh, uh, livestock, those livestock in the rural area. And uh, now you say you merge with the facts of the case uh, in the rural area and motor vehicle uh, qualifies as the, that security rights uh, uh, agreement, security rights. So, uh, I go to the next person. 
uh, let us, uh, which is, who is Jerry? What are the requirements of the agreement to be valid? So uh, for the agreement to be valid, mm. uh, I'm thinking about, or what comes to my mind is about the process of, of uh, of creating the security rights and having it registered by by the grantor mm -hmm. uh, the BRS, so the process of registration of the security rights. So the, the grantor is supposed to uh, create a security right that is then going to be accepted by uh, the, the person who is going to give the money all yes, the person who's going to give the money. And then mm -hmm. in this security agreement, there are requirements that are supposed to be there. So we are supposed to identify uh, um, what the security the, what the security right is, who is the guarantor, and who is the person um, giving the, the, the amount and what amount it is and the repayment or the obligation that is going to be to be the duration of obligation, and then this is supposed to be part of the of, um, of uh, the no uh, no yeah. yeah 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 even I uh, I don't want you to go to the registration bit. Eh? I the question was a requirement for agreement uh, to be valid, and uh, of course you have uh, tried to answer. The answer is that uh, first of all, it must be in writing. That is condition number one. Uh, entered between the guarantor, which is giving the security, and the lender. Then uh, it must be executed, of course. Uh, it must be identified the money which is being given and the securities, which in this case is the livestock and the motorbike. And uh, of course, it must be also says what in, uh, happens in case of default. Now, now. So uh, that question will be have answered it uh, when you answer it that way. So now we go to the last bit of the question, steps regarding the registration of the agreement. Uh, I'm on you, Ruth. This is where I would say you go to, according to to, to Mr. Wakemani, I think I would explain the procedure that he, he was saying, uh, you go to eCitizen, you register, I think it's a, you, you register with that one. Yes. That, you, that one? Yes, yes. You first of the first of all, the first step is, you, of course, you have a, uh, you have the agreement with you. You go to the citizen. Next step. Next step. Oh, you create an account. Then there's two. I think if you're an advocate, no, no. Yeah, you create an account. Once you create an account, there mm -hmm. is now you start filling up the, the forms. Mm -hmm. The sections. I can't remember. I need to go through the clip again. Mm -hmm. Um. You say what 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 is it evaluation? The, I mean, how much is it? Mm -hmm. Who is the guarantor? Who is the um, the lender? I think the lender is the one who does this. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I'll yes. go through the class. Again. Yes. Uh, you 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 have you have tried you have tried. Eh? Uh, of course. Uh, the first step is you go and open the eCitizen account because uh, this thing is done online. That is the first thing you must say. Then uh, you must also say that uh, this is done by the lender. The, the registration is done by the lender then uh,
you uh, you put in what is called notice in this citizen there there is a notice you can see i'm projecting the this book it is a book you must uh, go and read it it is it is it is it is uh, any question on uh, on uh, movable property security rights uh, yes uh, sorry uh, what we are seeing is the question is a question yes. oh let, let me project let me project let me project So, uh, participants can now see the Nini. I think, uh, can I increase the Nini here? Yes, I have increased. So, uh, if you look at page 16, uh, it's what I, I, I told you uh, in, in, in BRS, BRS uh, website, there are very good documents there you need to study. And uh, in a summarized form for your, for your commercial paper, one of them is this uh, movable property security right to hard book. Uh, you can see it, page 16. Uh, a security agreement requirements are that, those one may be writing signed by grantor, identify the secured uh, credit grantor, describe the secured obligation, describe the, the, the uh, of course the obligation is the, is, the, is the property and the money, which you have just said. So uh, the first step, if you go to e-citizen, this is done by the lender. Uh, you do what is called, you fill in the details, what uh, Ruth was trying to say, what is called uh, initial notice. So uh, identify the grantor. Uh, th those are the, 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 the things that are there in the initial notice. Uh, uh, the secured uh, creditor, description of the collateral, uh, any other information that uh, you have agreed in the agreement, eh? then of course you you pay some fee. Uh, upon uh, entering all those details, the registrar then enters the information on the registrar record. Then uh, the registrant, which is the lender, re receives a printable copy of the information contained in the notice, including the time of the registration, registration number, and all those details. The secured creditor, this is very, very important, must send the information contained in the notice to the grantor. Once uh, within the 10 days of receipt, once the notice has been registered. So uh, after filling all those details, you pay the fee, the registrar registers you, uh, you get the printable copy uh, with all those details, which is like uh, the certificate. Then uh, the secured creditor must send that notice to the guarantor within 10 days of, the, of getting the notice. 
of 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 uh, of doing the of 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 registering the notice. So, uh, those are the requirements for registration of a movable property security right. And this question. Uh, other part has been, uh, for example, question 6, June 2021, you can look at it. Uh, it is asked about requirement enforcement of a security right. Uh, registration process was discussed also. It's not the first time it was tested. Uh, question 2B, November 2017, April 2022. So that tells you that uh, Q&A usually helps you to, 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 to Nini. The past papers helped you to answer these questions. Uh, in our last class, I told you that uh, one of the predictions in this question that I'm thinking of that might come in future is the question on uh, drafting a movable property security rights agreement. So, uh, go and your homework after when you are studying, you have you are doing your previous studies. Please go and uh, practice doing a movable property security rights agreement. And uh, because uh, as you can see, we now drafting in uh, commercial has come back so that we are not caught. Uh, they say red handed or flat footed. Yes, you are, you are not, uh, you are not uh, caught, uh, not prepared for the exams. So we go to the next question, uh, which is question five. Uh, Loriani has been running her own ice cream business independently for the last couple of uh, of years. The business initially started slowly, but has grown during the last 12 months. To help out with the administrative side of business, her brother-in-law, Ian, became involved eight months ago. Initially, Lorian was paying his nominal wage, but more recently, four months ago, to be, be precise, she began to add her to the wage, 5% of, of the monthly of profit. Ian, who has been recently uh, taken early retirement, has been looking for a project to get involved in given his previous commercial experience. Lorani is currently thinking business relationship with Ian because she has established that he's using the business premises and office equipment for other consultants work that he does. To add to that, she discovered that the other consultants service she has, she has, she has been rendered to two neighborhood, to, 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 rendered to two neighborhood businesses, one of which is an ice cream parlor located within a local supermarket. Ian has been able to attack the consultancies due to the success of Rian, Rian business, citing relevant legal pro, uh, citing relevant legal authorities, advised Rian on whether she could bring any claim against uh, Ian. So, uh, I've read you the question and uh, the story. Oh. Okay, Molly, you're not projecting the question. We're still in MPSR. Okay. Sorry. Can I read the question again? Loriani has been running uh, her own ice cream business independently for the last couple of years. 
the business and uh, started slowly but gone during the last 12 months. To help up with the administrative side of the business, our brother in law Ian became involved eight months ago. Initially, Rorianu was paying his him a nominal wage, but more than 34 months ago, to be precise, he began to add the wage. Five of five of five percent of the business monthly income. Ian, who has recently taken early retirement, has been looking for a project to get involved in given his previous commercial relationship, uh, commercial experience. Loriani is currently rethinking her business relationship with Ian because she has established she's uh, using the business premises and office equipment for other consultancy work that he does. To add that, she discovered that other consultancy service she has been led to two neighborhood business. One of which an ice cream parlor located within the local supermarket. Yes, I've been able to attract the consultancies due to the success of Ryan business. Citing relevant legal authorities, I advise Ryan on whether she could bring any claim against Ian. So, uh, I'm on you, Marianne. What do you think this is the key word here? Um, the key word is that she was doing the business independently and then she brought her brother in to help with that administrative side. Another key word is that she's taking home 5% of the business monthly profit. That will be key in identifying if this does become a partnership. Then the other issue that is there is also mm, the fact that Ian is using the business's premises and office equipment to do other consultancy work. Mm -hmm. Very good. The key word there is, uh, first of all, uh, the question is testing on partnership. And uh, as I told you in the last class that uh, partnership is one of the other very favorable topic you can pick in an exam. And uh, it's not usually very difficult. In fact, you can be able to, to start with the, the question on partnership uh, to build your confidence. Another very good question you could have started with uh, in an exam is, was this question four, if we have just covered. Also, this one is not very difficult. Uh, gauging from the past papers, this is, these issues have been uh, tested. So uh, the question is asking on uh, partnership. And uh, partnership, there are two partnership, general partnership and uh, limited ability partnership. Uh, so also in a question, uh, it's also good to identify that, that this is a general partnership. Uh, so the question is asking you to so after we have identified is a partnership and is a general partnership, so then you, how do you proceed, uh, Jairi? What do you also do you think uh, here? Uh, yeah, Jairi, I'm on you. Yes, I am here. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to see uh, then uh, it being a general uh, a general partnership. Mm -hmm. What um, what uh, issue would would this partner have gone against for for to enable me advice, Lorraine? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yes, we are trying to help you answer the question. You have said very well 
uh, that uh, they are things they joined. Of course, the crew is that when he started giving him five percent of business monthly profit, he became a partner. And uh, you define the general partnership that as business a business which uh, people come together for purposes of making a profit. And if you are sharing profit, you are partners. So in a partnership, and, uh, you are a general partnership, there are those things as a partner you must do. In a partnership act of 2012, uh, by these people. So what, are the, what has he done here in the question? Uh, Malim, we have a question. Yes. When you read that uh, in sentence number four, hmm. uh, Lorraine was paying him a nominal wage, but more recently, four months ago, to be precise, she began to add to the wage 5%. So he's still being given salary. Then on top of the salary, he's getting the 5% uh, business monthly profit. Yes. Uh, is 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 an employee. Is an employee, and also is a uh, is also a partner because it is say he was paying you a nominal wage, but more than four months ago, to, she uh, began to add to her wage five percent business monthly or topic uh, profit. Okay. What, so. Wait, what? What I'm asking now is, yeah. according to what I was hearing from Mr. Mbogo, mm. when he was discussing about how to differentiate an employee by, and a partner, he said that a partner doesn't get any salary, but you, you deal with the, the profits and the losses, you distribute that. Yes. Uh, so would you be now a partner if you're also getting a salary? You know, uh, so no, Malimu. Yes. So, what was also confusing me, actually, when I first read this question, I was not even sure what area it is testing on. So when you're spoken about general partnership is when I have started to look at the facts. Because when I first read, uh, because it is Lorraine who is deciding how much uh, uh, Nani, Ian is going to get, and then we're told that uh, he's only getting 5% of uh, the profit of the of the company, but they have not told us about any other uh, Ian meeting any obligation. So I was wondering, I was confused. Initially, I thought that it is they are not uh, testing about partnership because in uh, general partnership, the sharing of uh, profit and obligations uh, uh, among the partners is uh, like equal, if they're equal partners, that is. So I was... I, I was lost in this question. Mm. Yeah, because of those issues. You see, uh, uh, you see, in in an exam scenario, eh? in an exam scenario, I told you that uh, uh, CLE usually draft their questions. Uh, sometimes they don't draft their questions well. Eh? Uh, for example, there is a question we had encountered in October 2020, uh, 2022. You remember that question we are dealing with, which uh, even me, it confused me a lot. Uh, sometimes they don't draft the question very well. Uh, There is a question here that uh, name what particulars will be submitted to the register upon registration. You see, this question here. This is question six of uh, this is question six of October twenty twenty two, uh, which was also testing on partnership. But if you look at as question B, visit and mark choose of our two designs are the name of the organization. What particulars will be submitted to the register upon registration? Do you submit documents upon registration? You don't submit documents upon registration. It is asking what particulars will be submitted to the register for the 
partnership to be registered. And so, sometimes you see that in the, the the they realize during the day of the exams. And uh, you, you hear invigilators saying you, hey, excuse me, uh, <laughs> cancel, come and cancel this question, uh, cancel this word uh, upon and put for. Uh, the, 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 the question will not be drafted as clear as possible. That is my point. But it's for you to know uh, where the, what they are trying to test. Because if you have done your, if for example, you have done your commercial very well, uh, if you have done your commercial very well, uh, or you have studied your commercial, you know that the, what this question was testing you. Also this question, if you have, you, you know, in commercial, they test you uh, on various topics, which I said you, uh, I told you last time, uh, and I read to you. Uh, they they ask you about companies, which is a substantive law, and the insolvency part the, of companies pa and person. Companies, this is the liquidation, uh, uh, persons is a bankruptcy. Then mergers and acquisition. That is topic number three. Then partnership. Then financial payments and system, uh, financial and payment systems. Then there's commercial agreements. That's the movable property and security rights. Then there's tax procedures in commercial transactions. So, uh, if you come to a question in an exam and you know that this, they test these topics. If you if you start, if for example you want to 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 start to start uh, fighting with these facts, for example, uh, what Ruth is asking you, can employee uh, also can employee also be a partner? Maybe it's going to confuse you. Uh, because an employee is an employee and a partner is an a partner. Uh, then, uh, of course, uh, partner share profits and loss equally, unless there is an agreement to the contrary. That is a general partnership. So, that is a partnership, the General Partnership Act 2012, with, uh, which uh, Guarantees uh, which 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 uh, which uh, guides this these partnerships, and uh, I want to open it. Uh, you can also yeah, open it. Was, yes. As in that, uh, maybe I can just tell you what what had come to my mind. Yeah. Uh, which was so of from what we are discussing now, because I had thought of it as uh, a competition issue where yeah. there is you are an employee and you're supposed not to compete with the business of your of your employer yeah. and uh, the business of the premises of the employer that they have, they have mentioned. So yeah. actually, I was wondering what uh, I was going to think more about yeah. the. Um, that uh, this person is, uh, or as an employee, are required not to compete with your with your employer. So I was going towards those lines. So now you have brought me back to what we, we should have been considering. Yes, uh, you know, uh, the reason we have these classes, eh? the reason for these classes we have them is for you to also not only for you to know the the answers for you to 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 nini to 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 for you to know to think because as i told i have a, 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 a as i have as as have 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 told you right now a Anytime you are asked about a commercial question, uh, 
you must you must answer in context of those topics so if you are not answering you must first of all in commercial uh, in commercial they ask you about uh, those topics i've named you and uh, that has been uh, the practice and it's very hard for example for them to ask you about uh, for example question one they ask you about partnership or question two b then they come to question five they ask you about partnership the general practice has been that they ask a question per topic. So for example, if you look at, of course they may miss some topics with some, some questions. So for you to, to, for example, this question one, this question one was dealing with mergers and, and acquisition. Uh, B, was as, uh, was 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 dealing with the uh, was still also mergers and was question so question one all, all of it was dealing with mergers and acquisition question two was dealing with companies that is the uh, the the substantive law then question three was dealing with the uh, bankruptcy Bankruptcy uh, of a natural person, or it's obviously of a natural person, A and B. But now, see, they introduced uh, commercial agreements, draft a letter. So this is how they usually set your question, the questions. And if they have asked you, they, they, they have asked you a, a question, uh, and a question on mergers and acquisition in question one. Or uh, they have asked you a question on substantive law uh, in question two. It is very hard for it to be repeated again because topics are many. In fact, uh, they omit some topics. And I told you how they have alternated in the last uh, four, uh, four, 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 four cities, uh, how they have alternated. So, for when you're answering this question, the facts must may not be right, and may it must may confuse you. But having that background, you will know they are asking you about a partnership and a partnership. A, this is a general partnership, which is defined in uh, of course partnership act of 2012 which uh, which, uh, which 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 uh, which governs these partnerships uh, a question that is asking L about llp will tell you expressly that is asking you about a limited liability partnership and I think uh, we can go, to, uh, I may look at one of the questions in the past that uh, that uh, ask you about LLP to differentiate. So uh, a partnership is a relationship between persons who carry business in common view to make profit. So when you see someone somewhere, they are saying that uh, they are making profit. That was the clearest indicator. Uh, that uh, this was partnership. Of course, uh, the percentage is a problem there. So, uh, with that in mind, uh, of course, under the Partnership Act, the partners, are, having studied that act very carefully, partners have some obligations against each other. Uh, which are they, and which are there, uh, uh, which have been violated here, uh, uh, Ruth? I think you start talking about the fiduciary duty, like the confidentiality. Mm -hmm. the, the, there was a number, the confidentiality aspect, uh, non-competition, I think. 
that I would, I would still use some of Jerry's uh, argument, the non-competition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That you should not act again in yeah, good faith. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. There are many, I can't remember. Even the, the way. Um, oh, uh, uh, disclosure. Like, for example, I can't earn money and then I don't disclose mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, let others help. Yes. Uh, yeah. The, yes. You can. You can. You can. Uh, you have stated the sadness. You see, uh, partners uh, first of all have a duty to do deal with good faith uh, against each other uh, in the partnership. So when uh, Ian. Uh, is is uh, is uh, involving himself in uh, uh, consultancy work uh, without uh, having informed uh, Rorian. That is not good faith. Then another duty is uh, they have a duty to use partnership property. Only to for the furtherance of the partnership uh, of their partnership. So when he is you when 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 he when he use, he uses the business premises and office, uh, he, he has breached that duty. Uh, the duty of using uh, the partnership property in furtherance of the partnership only. Then there is also the duty not to make secret of profit. Of course, when he rendered the consult as a service to other people, to neighborhood, uh, to the business, uh, of course he earned. And uh, the partners have a duty not to make secret profit. That is another point. Uh, of course, duty to disclose uh, any profit. Uh, of course, non-competition, not to put the partnership uh, in a in a way that it competes. Uh, the the side business that is doing does not uh, compete with the with the with the partnership so uh, those are the duties if you discuss uh, the duties of the partner towards the partnership, the obligations of the partner towards the partnership, uh, you would have answered that question very well. I have a and, question, Malim. Yes. Um, if I would be, there, I would handle it. I would handle yes that, but mm -hmm. I'd handle it in two ways because of that statement of Lorraine was paying his him a nominal wage, mm -hmm. uh, but. But more recently, four months ago, to be precise, mm -hmm. she began uh, to add to the wages 5%. So me, I would explain in two ways. Mm -hmm. I would explain as a, as a partnership, the need of a partnership agreement. Okay, the obligations that we have discussed. But I would mm -hmm. also add, um, for a partnership, you need the partnership agreement. Even if there's no here, it can be by implication, implied. Mm -hmm. Then I, I speak about the aspect of there's no clear uh, demarcation between partnership and an employee and also discuss the employee aspect of it mm -hmm. would i be wrong no you not be you not be wrong because uh, the main thing the main thing is the uh, partnership you not be wrong because uh, you see also 
uh, he, he was he was he was also an employee then he was uh, he was he was given a monthly profit but the main thing is a partnership adding about being an employee uh, yes you can add that one but uh, bring more the issue of partnership because uh, remember this question is testing you on a given topic in commercial that you have learned. So uh, discuss the main thing uh, and uh, you may add what you are saying. So then you, after discussing the duties of the, the partnership, then you talk about the, how now the, claim how now the now those are the of course he has breached all those duties fiduciary uh, trust good faith secret profits uh, dealing with property non competition so what is the claim uh, claim because what is the claim of uh, Roriani against the now he has breached those uh, those 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 uh, those, uh, those duties. So what 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 are the remedies of Roria? Now, Ruth, what you are saying, you may bring it here. Uh, now, uh, what what can uh, Roria do? Now, amend your what you are saying now to much to much to much here. Okay, thinking about it, I think in civil procedure, there's a way you, you bring, when you take no partnership, you bring a matter to court. There's one aspect. I don't know if you start with that. Is it a petition? You need to go through. There's yes. a way you can institute, um, I think, I don't know if you start on, you're supposed to institute in court issues of partnership. Yes, it is an oh, sure. it's an originating someone's. Oh, thank you. Uh, so a... I would say, if, okay, I'd say the first, the uh, first option, maybe you try to negotiate mm. uh, and see, like, I don't know, I don't think, I don't know, are you supposed to go to, like, you demand for profits that he has gained from the two, from the other company, the two companies that has exhorted him, you, if he doesn't agree, mm -hmm. now you, you now go to court. Yes. And now when when you go to court, uh, when you do the originating summons and the act is followed by supporting affidavit, so um, now you bring it uh, like a suit where you you will be claiming mm -hmm. uh, part if their partners are supposed to get a pro the money from the two businesses, mm -hmm. uh, you be compensated for for the use of your name, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, the use of your company for that those two businesses. I would also say. That could that is general damage. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, my head is going everywhere. That, that is how how I would think about it. Yes. Uh, of course. Uh, now, uh, one of the things that uh, claim against, of course. Uh, one of the things is that, uh, of course, Ian, you tell him, Lurian, uh, Ian have have uh, have breached the partnership. Uh, Lurian will first of all tell him to disclose the secret profits he has, he has uh, made and uh, maybe share with the partnership. That is one point. Number two, you may say that uh, because he was also an employee and also a partner, uh, you would say that uh, because uh, you are Ian, uh, you are told Ian who took an early retirement. You may also say that you may come back uh, to the partnership and took over the partners 
partnership and uh, dismiss dismiss uh, dismiss the, the this this young because he was an employee who was uh, also taking a you know they are not equal partners taking five percent of business income he dismisses him Rodian to dismiss him on top uh, giving him uh, the monthly profit and uh, then you can also discuss what uh, Ruth have said going to court uh, sue him of course in court you will be uh, claiming that uh, if he has refused to disclose the secret profits he have uh, he have he have made uh, uh, for for of course for him to 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 declare the secret of uh, profit he made the loss of business the partnership went through when he was uh, managing it all those things so when you when you say that you you will have um, answered that question well and uh, i was trying to fi find a case law before we started the class and uh, i think i'm going to look for in 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 uh, in uh, in such a question, commercial commercial papers you don't quote, you don't give a lot of case laws. You quote the law most of the times. But where you are told that a dispute went to court, it's good to, to have one case law. Unaona? Unaona? Walimu? Eh? Um, the one I have seen on, I think, a partner petitioning for the disillusionment of a partnership because the one partner is not meeting quite a few, quite a few of the obligations. It's Ruth Willi versus Helen Oluoch. Okay. Uh, uh, let, me, let, me, let me, what are what are the facts? Your, your background has a um, problem. Your background has a problem, eh? No, sorry, can you hear me now? I can hear you, but there is a zoo, 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 zoo. Sorry, I, I don't know why. Um, no, no, uh, it's okay. In, in this one, in this, the facts are essentially that there was a part, Ruth, and one Ruth, of the partners was Ruth, not Ruth, Ruth, Ruth. Uh, at the there, there. Um, the partnership. This one, they already established there was a partnership, there's a partnership agreement, but then one of the partners was in breach. So you can, you can okay. just look into the fact. But then the one, the one case that I did all along for test of partnership is Kinoti versus Kibanga. Yeah. Although it's an interesting case, it's the one. Okay, I, I, I um, we've not covered this in class, but I have it in my LLB notes. Okay. So case um essentially there was an mm -hmm. they were in the negotiation stages to form the agreement but like what hadn't contributed and then they weren't he was being paid almost like an employee on a commission basis and um they uh, they they hadn't like agreed on those things mm -hmm. and it was said to build the test for partnership okay I kept thinking, even in this situation, there's um, it will be a test for partnership. And I think there's an older case where you were supposed to distinguish where there was a woman with a bar, she, she brought in someone else to help with the management of the bar. And then initially, they were paying them salary, and then they, um, she became sick. So the guy took over for like the, the management, mm -hmm. and then yeah, then what happened is the bar was in a place where there was going to be compulsory application. So the question was, um, does James have a claim towards the payment that the woman, um, the owner got? Is he a partner? As such, should he get like 
um, appointments. So you were supposed to look at the legal for both parties. Okay. I don't know. I'm very confused. If, if you can, maybe in the next class, if you'll have come up with maybe something to distinguish an employee and and um an employee and a partner okay. more eloquently to be better. Because I think in this case, I would have started off being not even meet the requirements. But like as an employee, we could sue him. <laughs> okay. I have a yeah. question, Miriam. What, what is the old case? Um, Kinoti versus Kibanga. No, the one we are saying about a bar. Um, it, it was, I think, a question. It was a question. I you know I've covered it somewhere. I don't know where, but I know it's a question. Oh, okay, thanks. The, the other case you have said that it's Ruth versus? Ruth Winnie versus Helen Oluwoch. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, good. You see, uh, case rules are very, very important. Uh, I'm going to look at that. Um, here you need a case law. When you say that uh, uh, when you say that uh, there was, there's a dispute in, on partnership, you, 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 you need to, to nini. If, in, in fact, you see also in this question, uh, I'm just thinking, you, know, you see in this question 3A, uh, alternative to bankruptcy, uh, the, not one, that one, uh, you can leave, uh, you see this bankruptcy order, uh, there, there are instances where the court has uh, declined to give a bankruptcy order because the requirements or conditions did, we, we are not meant. And also that is where you you can also you can also you can also uh, you can also you can also put in there the, the, the case laws. But more more, more important uh, in the in, in our in our class in our last class commercial I I I, I, will, I, I will have come up with uh, some some case rules to be applied uh, everywhere so we are going to tackle that one uh, uh, because you some of these cases you need some uh, case law and uh, I can tell you if you quote a case law you are going to to earn very good marks. But uh, even if you don't have a quiz law, you better you understand the question and the, the principles and the the various the, the various act. And if you don't remember the act, the specific sections, uh, quote the principle. So we are going to go to our last question. Uh, question six. Mwalimu. Yes. Please allow me to request. Uh, was it Marianne to post that case here? The old case of partnership. Mm -hmm. I I didn't put the name. If you could put it in our in a, in our group so that I can reference to it after class. Thank you. Can you okay. put could I, Can you put there in chat? You know your audio has a problem. Chat, eh? Sasawa. Okay. Uh, you are, your audio has a problem. Uh, you can chat. It's very, very, very important. Those cases are very, very important. Uh, in fact, those cases you can be asked uh, in, in when you are dealing with the case law, you can be asked, you know, you can be asked such a question in civil litigation. You think you are running for for commerce, you, you, a question comes like that one. Uh, blah, blah, there was a dispute in a partnership, blah, blah, approach court. You are drafting an originating summons, then you maybe the, even if it's not drafting, you are, so when you are, you are, you are, you are dealing with this case law in commercial, you are dealing also, you, you are, 
they say you knock uh, two doves with one stone. We're also dealing with the civil litigation. So they are very, very important. So question six, Mirewe is a Kenyan company that uh, manufactures and distributes for sales and sells daily products such as yogurt, pep cream, and cream of cheese. In March 2022, uh, Mirewe Mire, Mire, Mire Limited received two assessments from KRA, both for the period 2010 to 2018. One assessment was in respect to corporate income tax, the ability for 10 million, and the other one in respect to VAT, which was 5 million. Both assessments were issued on basis of other declaration of income and VAT received by the taxpayer. Mire Limited considers that they have collected self assessed their tax they are based and did pay the required tax. While KRA argues that the company attempted to evade the tax they are paid and it demands immediate payment. With a way limited, I've come here for a legal opinion on the following question. Whether KRA can issue Mire Way Limited with an assessment for 2010 to 2018. Uh, what is the, who are you on? What are the keywords here, Jerry? What are the keywords in this question? Uh, it's about uh, the assessments that can be given by KRA and the timelines that this, this uh, assessments can be given. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, have you done this question in uh, in, in class? Have no, you done we, this have topic? Have we haven't covered. We haven't covered. We have not. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I think it's the last topic you are going to cover. Eh? OK. Yes, it's the last topic. Now you are each topic in commercial. We are doing mergers and acquisitions with Mbai. OK. I think uh, this is the last topic you are going to to, to, delete, to to do. So do you have any idea in this question A? I do not. I do not. Sorry. Uh. Ruth, what do you think? We have also not done taxation. Uh. Mm. Okay. So you don't have any idea? I don't know. I'll just say yes, they can. But I don't know if they can or they cannot. Okay. Uh, Marianne, what do you think? I haven't learned it also, but I think we are reckon. We are reckon. I, yes. Uh -huh. uh, this question, I think we are going. This question, uh, I was trying to look at uh, the answer. Uh, before we the class started eh? uh, but i i had not found a very conclusive answer so this question we are going to to it revolves of course around the tax procedures act and uh, which uh, which, uh, of course, a taxpayer, uh, a person uh, is needed to, to do a tax return eh? uh, during the reporting period, uh, which is called a self-assessment. Uh, if you look at section 28 of Tax Procedures Act, eh? Uh, and uh, of course, 
adverse uh, amendment. Uh, it was also dealing with amendment of assessment of section 31. So these tax questions, uh, you know, tax, tax is a specialized area. Is a specialized area, and I usually don't. Uh, I usually don't like to lie. Uh, even the some of the tax questions that I did in Q and A, I had to consult some tax expert. So, uh, I think this question we are going to. I'm going to. To 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 Nini, we are going to to put it on hold. Uh, until. The next class because these are purely tax issue because tax issue are very technical and uh, it's like like what I call accounting. You know, accounting I cannot come here and and start telling you the ledger is done this and uh, blah blah and uh, or the balance sheet is done this. The only knowledge I, I have is the one I I learned at class I can say which was sufficient for me to do the paper and pass, which I've already now forgotten. So I I want us, I, I don't want to give an, a conclusive answer on this. I want to, to co consult some people uh, who, who, who I usually consult on these tax issues. Then I'll come with a conclusive answer next, next, uh, uh, next time we meet. But uh, question B is not hard because uh, this is a purely legal thing. Now this is legal, although it's starting on uh, on 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 on, uh, on uh, taxes. These are legal, 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 legal thing. And uh, it is asking you, as a taxpayer, dissatisfied with the KRA assessment, what are the major steps that Milky Limited should take before uh, going to the tax tribunal? So this one is not hard because this is uh, this uh, of is of of course it talks about uh, objection. Objection. So you are supposed to uh, object uh, object to the commissioner for tax. Which should be done within 30 days of uh, being notified of the decision. So after the decision is made by the ta taxpayer, the KRA, you are have that days to, to dispute. That is section 51 of the Tax Procedures Act. Of course, uh, condition valid for a notice of objection then you must lay the grounds which you are objecting. Of course, uh, say that, uh, of course, one of the grounds is say that the taxpayer has paid the, the, the tax due or other, any other grounds. Then uh, the commissioner will give a decision, which is called the objection decision. That is section 518 of the Tax Procedure Act.
Then, another very, very important point is that uh, if you wrote your objection with the commissioner, within, and it does not give the decision within 60 days. The, the objection is deemed to have been allowed. That is also section 51, 11 of the Tax Procedures Act. So, the, all that procedure is found in uh, section 51. Objection to the tax decision. You needed to discuss salient features of section 51 of uh, Tax Procedures Act, uh, which of course you are going to run in class. But uh, you know, time does not wait for the king. We, we need to also do this, uh, Nini, to, 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 to Nini, to, to have known this answer. So, uh, give me more time. I'm going to research and ask people on this question 6A, because of course, as I have said the tax, uh, is a specialized area. It's an area in itself. It's like accounting. And uh, you need to have uh, no knowledge of it. Even reading an act may not give you, may not give you, may not give you uh, an answer. This include even, even if it means uh, contacting someone in KRA to get the right answer. So uh, next class, we are going to start with uh, you draft a, 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 a letter of guarantee, question 3A, question four, Question 3C, draft a letter of guarantee, which you are going to project. I'm going to do here uh, to give you uh, Nini, to give you here to, so that you can be able to, to change the settings here so that you can share. And also, uh, I would have... Uh, Done this question uh, tomorrow. I'll consult more on this question 6A uh, so that I can give uh, a very good answer. Uh, my, what I would urge you, you is that you, you also be very keen in class. on these tax procedures uh, in commercial transaction topic. Uh, it is not a, it's not an easy topic, especially purely on tax issues. The low part you can be able to do, but tax issues, uh, you also need to be very keen in class. Just as I, I told you, I, I, I told you on mergers and acquisition, it's also, Another another very tricky area in commercial. 
So we are going to start with these two questions, question 3A, question 3C, and question uh, 6A. And uh, I want us to do this on uh, Tuesday, because uh, as we can see here, we are behind the. Uh, we are behind our. We are, we are behind in our in our timetable. Uh, we are we, we are supposed now this weekend to be dealing with the uh, with, with the civil litigation. Uh, 